think about that and then i will come into blended learning so blended learning uh, i will also talk about blended learning and its benefits uh, and then i will also talk about uh, integrating the blended learning in the courses and uh, i will also touch base on the uh, activities related to blended learning then i will uh, then i will spend some time on uh, interactive tools for teachers uh, and also uh, i will engage how to engage i will also give you a little bit of briefing about how to engage more and how to engage more often so that also uh, will be taken into consideration and then uh, we come to the tentative action plan that, that's a very small minuscule part i'm not going to give you any watertight document that this is how it has to be done and things like that i will just give you a, a small hint or narration or my perspective of how you can go about planning a session so that you can take a cue and it can vary from person to person somebody can disagree with me also so there is no problem let us let us sort it out in the q and a session so i will just present my view uh, and then uh, you can uh, you can take it forward uh, so this is my overview so let me uh, get into the first one so the initial thoughts the initial thoughts uh, will hover uh, around uh, there is a lot of uh, discussion and debate uh, after having witnessed about uh, 9 to 10 months of our uh, lockdown and the covid situation uh, which has forced majority of the universities majority of the education institutions starting from a pre nursery to a phd to get into the online teaching mode so whether online teaching mode is really very effective whether it makes some sense uh, or uh, is traditional teaching uh, much superior than uh, the online teaching there is a lot of discussion and <laughs> Throughout the, throughout the globe, uh, so we will we will we will ponder a little bit on that. I will take some views, I will take some suggestions, and things like that, and then we will move forward. And then uh, there is a very important question: Why uh, experiential and blended learning are required? So uh, at a, at a scenario where uh, online uh, teaching and learning has become inevitable, how do I really try and make use of this experiential and blended learning? And then, how do they add value to teaching and learning? Are they really meaningful? So I am doing something, but whatever I am doing, is it providing value to whatever I am trying to do? So we will just see whether they add value to teaching and learning. So what does the student gain? What does the faculty gain? How does it add value to the course curricula that we are actually providing? And then what are the what are its pros and cons? So how how are we going to manage how are we going to overcome so these are uh, the thoughts that i'll be pondering over uh, the next two hours okay fine so let me start with the first one so i have just compared uh, traditional teaching uh, with online teaching so when i am uh, trying to compare this traditional teaching with online teaching so in traditional teaching there is a physical presence of both the teacher and the student so it can be either way around it can be a teacher centric discussion it can be a student centric discussion but whereas in an online teaching if you just directly compare so there is a virtual presence virtual presence of both virtual presence of both the student and the faculty so uh, it is uh, i know uh, many of you will agree with me the kind of challenge to really make it a student centric one it will be mostly uh, a faculty centric kind of a discussion so that that's a that's a basic difference in this particular uh, case uh, second if you look at in uh, traditional teaching there is an eye contact i will be able to view the audience i will be able to see the audience eye to eye so when i am seeing the eye when there is an eye, eye contact there is lot to be conveyed through an eye contact so i will understand whether he is interested or whether he is disinterested in the topic how should i make it more uh, meaningful how should i make it more attractive what needs to be done when should i intervene when should i allow him to uh, uh, do certain things everything is easily uh, possible for me to assess but there is no eye contact here it's going to be pretty difficult see neither you are seeing me nor i am seeing you in person so in that particular case 
the scope for eye contact is little less and sometimes when we are uh, in such a big crowd when we are streaming our video probably there is a problem with the bandwidth also so that is where uh, we majority of them restrict to uh, show our faces and put a video kind of a presentation and we just try to uh, restrain from that and uh, uh, so uh, i i i think i would ask everybody to pardon with me that i am not showing my face now maybe during the q and a session i will just uh, open up uh, so that you can just see me at that point in time so now the focus is on the content so let me go ahead with the, the content and let me not be worried about my face okay so here when i am uh, there is an eye contact i i am capable of reading the body language and which cannot be done using an online uh, teaching so it is a kind of a, a kind of an issue that needs to be dealt with in the online teaching and uh, possibility of a better interaction though i am not guaranteeing that traditional teaching will have a better uh, interaction but there is a high possibility of a better interaction because uh, i i pull up some students i will connect with some students mm. i can uh, i can i can throw up some questions and then in fact uh, come up come up with some yeah. and uh, sorry is there some question If somebody has unmuted and mute for you, hello. 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 Yeah. So there is a possibility of better interaction when compared to that of. a little lesser interaction in the in the online teaching scenario less or no dependency on technology so either i may use a powerpoint presentation or i may use an overhead projector or whatever it is but very less or no dependency on a technology i can simply be a talk and talk professor but whereas here it's complete dependency on the technology so uh, technology becomes a great enabler here and if technology at some point in time for some reason gets disturbed then uh, my whole thing goes for a toss faculty has complete control faculty has complete control because uh, he neither depends on technology uh, all the or if there is a particular technology he is handing that particular technology and with it, it is within the four walls he is having a reasonably better control in a traditional teaching environment whereas a faculty has limited control suddenly if there is a uh, if there is an internet problem in either your and in malaga malawi or if there is a problem in bangalore the internet there is an issue it comes off then it comes off so i don't have a control though i am prepared i have already seen this and i wanted to ensure so time is running out for both of us so i will not be able to do that there is a there is a kind of a limited control on that particular area then what are the challenges in online teaching and learning so when i am looking at the uh, when i am looking at the challenges i look at uh, from the students perspective let me just share for them there is enhanced screen time they are always with either the mobile or they are always you call it as a smartphone or they are with a tab or they are with a, a notebook so it is generally a, a problem of enhanced screen time so that there is a kind of a wear out in their minds as well as in their eyes you you will feel you will see them very tired at the end of the day because there is an enhanced screen time there can be plenty of technical issues so certain things we may be uh, capable of managing certain things are beyond our particular control restricted network area if i am entering a particular area where there is some army or something i may not i may not get sorry for that so uh, i may not get a network connectivity or there is some restricted network area and uh, there is improper acknowledgement so whether uh, whether i am going in the right pace or not maybe i am not getting right kind of a feedback or an acknowledgement from the uh, from the other side so i don't know from the students perspective there can be from the student perspective there can be there can be some issue there can be there can be some issue that will that will crop up and they will not be able to acknowledge and frequent changes in the schedule so there can be an issue in the admin they are not able to uh, they are not able to manage the particular classes 
or there is a particular issue where the teacher is not available or there is a network issue which which makes or which forces the admin to change the particular schedule there is a lot of changes in the schedule so those also can uh, create a problem for the student he should be ever ready for attending a class it can be late in the evening it can be early in the morning it can be a lot of issues and if people are in the science stream they need to handle a lot of laboratory classes so there is a lot of practical courses so which needs to be uh, which needs to be done in laboratories or they have to do hands on and things like that so how are they going to manage that that becomes a problem that's a challenge in online so i can teach a theory course so they can understand the concepts they can understand the logic but when it comes to a practical course it is a little difficult though there are certain uh, modern technology which can help you but it is not as equivalent like knowing by doing so you you do it in a laboratory on your own it gives a completely different kind of a feel and it gives you a completely different kind of a comfort and confidence vis a vis when you are doing it online it has got a completely different kind of a feel hope you people agree with me yes somebody once in a while just give some uh, feedback so that i'm i'm going properly is it okay people hello uh, okay uh, from the teachers perspective from the teachers perspective it is a new normal of teaching so we are not used to this online kind of a teaching for a, a reasonable period of time so we have been uh, completely in the traditional teaching setup where we used to meet students meet people and then discuss in person so it was a completely different kind of a uh, so it's a new normal so they are also technically getting adjusted generally technically inferior let us be very honest we are slightly uh, uh, we are slightly older we are not in the younger generation it can be again based on age some young teachers are very good in technology i'm not denying that let me be very honest i am 47 and uh, i'm not very great at technology i i can tell i'm technically inferior in technology so managing technology becomes an issue it's not as easy as the today's youngsters who are born with internet born with smartphones who are used to technology much better and there is a less attention span so it's very difficult to hold the attention of the uh, of the audience it can be students it can be corporate employees it can be anybody so holding the attention span of the audience is going to be even much more difficult in an online space and one sided communication so it's more like uh, uh, the other side are slightly more mute spectators so there is no much of uh, uh, there is no much of uh, any particular kind of a response from the other side so it is more of uh, speaking from one end so that makes it even much more difficult for the faculty to go go ahead and uh, communicate things because he doesn't even get an iota of an idea whether the other particular party is understanding or whether he is following or whether he is there or not there is a lot of difficulty and it is very very less involvement from the other end so the re the receiver's end is low there is low involvement and even after prompting so even after the teacher prompting so please give me some feedback or uh, are you in a position to understand do you have any doubts there is no response so there is very less involvement from the other end because they are used to so many Uh, classes they are used to so many webinars they are used to so many seminars so it really because of the enhanced screen time they really they really tired both in their mind and in their body so there is a lot of wear out so the next one i am talking about is the uh, the competencies required from the faculty so uh, uh, in order to manage this kind of a scenario where there is one side we feel that traditional teaching is better than online teaching on the other side we don't have a choice but to use online teaching so we know when we are using an online teaching there are some challenges that we need to really face so we need to overcome that particular challenges and face so what is that in order to face the particular challenge in order to overcome the particular challenge what are the competencies that are required from the faculty's perspective okay so well versed with technology or the platform that has been used so one needs to really look at how a particular faculty is well versed with the technology or the platform that he is using so you can use anything you can use a google classroom you can use a microsoft team you can use a zoom 
So whatever platform that we are using, we need to gain a little bit of mastery over that particular platform. So then I am capable of keeping that particular platform reasonably under my control so that I will be able to navigate, I will be able to use it more effectively. One. Second, so to a large extent, PowerPoint uh, is the base for uh, providing any presentation. So in that particular sense, when PowerPoint uh, uh, is the key thing that one needs to look at, so I need to really uh, focus on how to enhance or how to sharpen my PowerPoint skills. So that sharpening of PowerPoint skills will really help you to gain some kind of an attraction from the audience. Use the mixed pedagogy so that you can keep them engaged. So if you are doing the same thing time and again, there can be a monotony that is set up in the minds of the consumers and that monotony will lead to monotony will lead to a kind of a problem and uh, people may lose interest after a period of time that is what we call it as attention span and hence you need to use a mixed pedagogy so that is what i will come towards the end so how will you have an action plan for a session i will come towards the end but i will generally suggest you to use a mixed pedagogy to keep them engaged and then identify meaningful activities so you look at uh, uh, certain activities uh, when you're using a mixed pedagogy, identify some meaningful activities and those meaningful activities will help. And when you're doing some activities, another very uh, important thing for any particular uh, audiences, you need to give an immediate feedback. So how did you do the particular activity? The response needs to be instantaneous or very quick, a quick or an immediate feedback will help the participants to have a lot of interest in future activities. Otherwise, they lose interest in the future activities because you are not giving any, any input about what how they have performed, what they have done in the last activity, how it was graded. All those things need to be done pretty quickly. So now uh, coming to one of the uh, key things that I was looking forward to. That one is called experiential learning. So what is this experiential learning? The name suggests it all and even the, uh, and even the uh, picture on the side of it gives you an indication, gives you an indication what is experiential learning. It is learning through experience. So it's more of a hands-on experience. So you know uh, uh, you just see somebody uh, doing something with an electrical wires or is measuring some output of that particular electric wires. So when he touches that using that particular device and when he does it on his own, he understands what is the voltage, what is the ampere and all those particular things he is capable of understanding because he is learning through experience. He is doing that on his own and then he is trying to understand. And uh, this learning will bring in a lot of reflection on observation. He observes. So when I am connecting this and this, or when I am testing something, this is the ampere, this is the voltage. Or when I am testing something else, there is a change in the... So he is able to observe, he is, he is able to reflect on, and he is able to understand. So this learning through reflection on observation uh, makes it much more stronger and it goes much more deeper. So it makes a lot of sense. And today, simulations will help you, experiential learning. Today, simulations will help you to make you understand how you need to do things much more in a very systematic or in a better way. So that way, simulations play a very significant role. So experiential learning, in a nutshell, if I need to say, it is more about learning through experience and experience only. What are the benefits of experiential learning? What are, the, what are the key benefits of experiential learning? So when I'm talking about uh, key benefits of experiential learning, which is learning by doing, there is a strong connect with the course. There is a very strong connect with the course. So how do I say there is a strong connect with the course? So I teach a course. I know what is the outcome that the course needs to offer because we uh, today uh, the whole world is moving towards outcome based education which is called as the OBE which is the base for the national board of accreditation 
uh, and even the Washington Accord, everybody says about outcome-based education. So uh, when we uh, adapt to this outcome-based education, uh, and when we focus on learning by doing, we understand what type of an experiential learning we should provide for a respective course, so that there is a very strong tie or connect between the course and the particular experiential learning experiment that he or she is doing. One. Second, so when I am creating an experiential learning uh, program or a particular uh, project uh, which is connected to a particular course, it becomes an original activity of mine. I, I want my particular students to do it the Indian way. So when you are doing it in Malawi, you know the local brands better, you know the local environment better, you know the local uh, market much better. And when you are designing uh, an experiential learning activity in Malawi or in Zambia, you know the particular place better. And when you are designing something, that becomes an original content. There is a lot of originality in it and people will get involved in that particular aspect and retaining the originality. Second. Third, there are no one ways of using or making use of an experiential learning activity. There are multiple ways. Those multiple ways, if every, every student or every group of students think different ways in doing that particular activity, then automatically it gives scope for creativity. So there is a lot of creativity that has been kindled through the experiential learning activity. Somebody do, somebody does it more differently. Somebody does it much more meaningfully. Somebody does it in a, in a totally different kind of a way, where you are amazed to look at how he did, how did he think in this particular direction. So it's a completely, uh, uh, completely tangential way of thinking and doing things. Out of the box thinking, they call it as creativity. Then comes teamwork and collaboration. Then comes teamwork and collaboration. So here, there is, you are providing a lot of scope. They are not learning individually. Though they learn certain things individually, they share it with the team. And uh, the team starts working together. So uh, teamwork works. It really works. And uh, collaboration. So they are able to collaborate the ideas. They are able to collaborate their views. They are able to collaborate their perceptions. And when they are collaborating their ideas, views and perception, it becomes a wonderful project. They know how to collaborate. So somebody is good at something, give that particular responsibility to him or her. Somebody else is good at execution, ask him to execute. So this particular understanding and the, the, the teamwork and collaboration really uh, goes very well when you are, uh, when you are uh, witnessing or when you are running a program on experiential learning. So this is a proven one. There are uh, plenty of research has been done on uh, on the experiential learning, and there is a cycle by uh, Kolbs. So there, he says a concrete experience. One will gain concrete experience by doing or having an experience. So let us assume you're doing a particular course where you have designed uh, a course project. Which needs to be which needs to be done in an experiential learning way. You want them to learn every concept and do understand the particular concept and implement or apply the particular concept in the course project. So that is when you when they apply it and when they do it when they are doing they have an experience in doing that. One second reflective observation. So when they do it they review what has gone right, what has gone wrong. So they start reflecting on the experience. Oh, when I did this, like this last time, this was the output. They would have clearly noted. So what did I do right? And how did it work? So what did I do wrong? And what should be, what should be corrected this time? So they will start reflecting. So there will be a lot of introspection in the minds of the people in the group when they're doing a course project and collectively trying to collaborate and then trying to reflect upon. And once that reflective observation happens, then they start conceptualizing in an abstract way. So then they will conclude, they will learn from the experience. So this is what I wanted to do. This is how I have done. And this is 
the outcome. So they start concluding. So this has to be done like this. This needs to be taken in this particular direction. So this can be true to any particular case. I am I am trying to even talk about uh, running uh, uh, testing an ad campaign. An advertisement campaign can be tested before it was commercially launched with a group of people and uh, just check their likes or dislikes. And when they know that certain dislikes are there, correct that particular commercial and ensure that you are you are giving a commercial that is enjoyable by the people. So you get to conclude only based on reflective observation and uh, understanding the how people have done that particular task. And finally comes active experimentation. From concrete experience, you get into active experimentation where you are planning and trying out what you have learned. So now you really try to implement and execute. So this is what I have learned that this is working. Let me implement it in the market. Let, let me implement it in the classroom so that the students are better prepared, the students are better equipped. So I get a very clear view of how I have done things in a much more systematic way. So the golf's experiential learning tries to very clearly give you an idea or a kind of a suggestion where the entire cycle is revolving around experience and getting the reflective observation and then abstract conceptualization and actively try and do that particular experimentation. So uh, going forward, steps to be steps to be followed uh, in experiential learning. So experiential learning activities is uh, can also be game based learning. So if you are uh, if you are trying to create uh, a, a course project, it is fine. Or you want to do it as a game based learning, you create a game and uh, you want to ensure that they can learn through that particular participating in that particular game. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. But what does it does? It does provide an opportunity for learning. So it is not only just a game. It is not just only fun. So there is a lot of learning uh, from this particular activity as a whole. It provides a lot of opportunity for learning. So that learning is immense. And that learning is more meaningful and that learning is more deep and it creates a lot of sense of uh, understanding from that particular involving the activity. So that can also be an experiment. So it can be a practical experiment also. Uh, most of the science team will agree. So when I'm talking about a chemical reaction or when I'm talking about some friction in physics or when I'm talking about uh, some kind of programming in, uh, in an computer science. So I will be able to make them understand that through an experiment. So what is friction all about? Or what is the chemical reaction if I'm, if I'm mixing uh, two particular chemicals with a particular liquid? Uh, what happens to that? How does it get transformed? I am able to demonstrate that. So that demonstration will bring in a kind of a solidarity and strong feeling about the particular reaction that happened and what is the outcome. So learning from each other through social learning. So there, when I'm doing it collectively for a group or when I'm doing it collectively for a team, so there is a lot of scope. There is plenty of scope for social learning also. There is plenty of scope for social learning. So people learn from each other. So if you generally look at, uh, at our uh, the institute where I am working, and I am teaching uh, mostly branding, marketing, and other particular courses for the students. So here I would uh, deem my responsibility or my role as a facilitator. So we will facilitate a lot of discussions yes. and uh, we put them into different kinds of groups. When it comes to a lot of activities, we put them into some kind of groups. And those groups will gel well with each other. They will understand, they will discuss, they will debate. And uh, they will, there will be a lot of peer learning. So I learn not only from the faculty always, not only from the book always, not only from the internet always. So I also get to learn from my fellow colleagues. I also get to learn from my peers. So my peers will give, in, give me immense amount of learning. So that is what I say is as learning from each other through the social learning. Then how do I? How do I integrate? How do I integrate experiential learning to our teaching? How can somebody? That is why on the right hand side, if you see, 
I have put an integrated chip IC. There is an IC there in the uh, in the picture there. The IC in the picture very clearly indicates that it is an integrated chip. Like that, how do I integrate this into my course? So I, I am not too sure uh, whether all the courses can be using experiential learning. Uh, in at least in my institute, uh, I am out of few courses that I am teaching. I will select a few courses where it will fit to do a, a experiential learning. So they will experience and then they will learn. So select, uh, use some selective courses. Then create appropriate experiential learning activities. You will uh, you will identify and you will create some selective appropriate uh, uh, experiential learning activities, and then integrate it with the respective courses, and then conduct the activity. And each time when you are conducting an activity, again you can go back to the course life cycle. So each time when you are conducting that particular activity, you would have identified, you would have reflected upon what kind of mistake I did when I am conducting this last time. So how should I avoid that particular mistake and how do I refine it so that the particular activity becomes much more better. It is just like conducting some events. So there are global events that are conducted across... Hello? Hello? Am I, am I audible? Hello? Yeah, hello? Audible, sir. Audible. Yeah, yeah. There is some disturbance. Okay. Somebody has not put on mute, I believe. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And, okay, uh, sir. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, uh, so integrate it with the respective courses and conduct the activity and refine it. So whenever I'm conducting that particular activity, I get a lot of learning from the experiences. So whatever mistakes I have done, I can re I can go about refining it and it really makes the particular activity much more meaningful and very, very useful. So how do I successfully uh, do this? How do I bring in success for my experiential learning activity? Is by doing a planning. So I, I plan and whatever I plan, I implement and after implementing that, I will evaluate. I will evaluate how the activity was really taken and done by my students. And for evaluation, I will have very clear cut rubrics. So on what basis am I evaluating? So I'll give a very clear scoring guide to my students. So these are the parameters and these much are the marks uh, basis on so and so parameters. This is how I'm going to evaluate you. Everything is very transparent. I give it to them much in advance. And then after the particular activity, I give them a feedback. Why somebody has got uh, a 50 out of 100? Why somebody has got a 80 out of 100? I give them a feedback or how the guy was, guy or girl was scored 80 or the group which has scored 80 is done better than the group which has scored 50. I will give some validity. I will give some points so that they understand and there is there is no disparity. So everything will be, be, will be very transparent in that particular case. Okay, my experiment. So having said that, if uh, I'm going to tell, uh, talk a lot about this experiential learning without uh, even demonstrating how was my experience in, in conducting an experiential learning activity, then it becomes, uh, then it becomes pretty uh, awkward. So I'm going to share one of my experiences. I was teaching, I'm talking about an experiential learning uh, activity that I've taken 10 years back. So I have uh, taught a course uh, for the uh, PG students. I teach the uh, postgraduate students, the MBA students, a lot of marketing courses. And one of my uh, courses uh, seems to be uh, a popularly uh, accepted course because my PhD is also from brand management. And hence I teach a course called brand management for students and brand management has got a lot of, lot of relevance in today's scenario. We started consuming a lot of brands nowadays from across the globe. So brands play a very, very significant role in each and everyone's life. And hence, uh, uh, and hence, let me uh, tell you what did I do. So what I did is uh, when I taught this particular course, uh, there were about some uh, 70 to 80 students in my course. So what I did is I put them into a group of uh, five or six students 
and then i uh, asked them to uh, come out uh, or i i gave them a very clear uh, briefing about what is expected out of this particular course in terms of an experiential learning activity so i i designed a, i designed a, a course project for brand management and the course project had two phases or in fact rather three phases the first phase was the student needs to uh, the student will be on a lottery method they will be able to take a particular sector and uh, once they have decided or once they have chosen a particular sector they have to come out with a uh, virtual or an imaginary brand they will come out with an imaginary brand that they create and that imaginary brand the imaginary brand for that imaginary brand they have to give a brand name they have to give a logo they have to give a tagline and then uh, whatever uh, whatever uh, they have to create a website for that and then they have to really communicate the brand to the outside world that means they have to come out with the uh, marketing communication it can be an advertisement or a small information where they want to share it with the rest of the world so as a student we don't expect you to come out with a commercial advertisement which is this 30 seconds it can be slightly a lengthy uh, lengthy information or an advertisement where you are trying to portray your brand so then that particular activity uh, will very strongly get into the mind of the consumers or the mind of the readers where uh, the, the the students where they have involved in the activity so they know the difficulty in creating a brand name they know the difficulty in coming out with the logo they will start thinking why this particular logo is in a particular color does color signify something everything will be started everything will be looked upon in a particular way so 10 years back i gave a concept called call auto rickshaw auto rickshaws are very popular three wheelers in india those who have visited india and those who are from india they know that those who are not from india they might not be knowing about those vehicles it's a three wheeler uh, three wheeler uh, uh, vehicle uh, which is generally a public transport people use this particular transport and it can navigate all the smaller roads and smaller streets and it can lead you to the destination it's very popular in india in 10 years back in 2010 or 11 years back i visualized that uh, there should be a call order which you should call that particular guy and the guy should come to your location and pick up of course now there is lot of this ola and uber which are really doing that very easily but 10 years back it was not there so we, i visualized this and then i gave that particular project to my students this is how they have come out with the execution of the pro project where i am talking about you can see the brand name they have created you can see the logo and you can just see how Uh, they have come out with an advertisement pertaining to that particular uh, uh, experiential learning activity i will just play it for you hope 
hope uh, you will agree with me that uh, these students have created the logo these students have created a, a tagline these students have uh, identified certain brand elements they themselves have acted in the advertisement they try to convey a message Hello. 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 Uh, professor, it will break for the camp. Can I talk about it? No question. Okay.
Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I will just proceed from wherever I've stopped. Am I audible? Once again, I'm checking it. Yeah. Am I audible? Somebody can just uh, type. 
that I'm audible or Hello, am I audible? Can somebody? Yes, okay, thank you, Professor Ganeshan. Is my presentation visible? Yes, sir, visible, sir. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I was talking about my learnings from uh, experiential learning. So let me move forward. Okay, uh, I go to blended learning. So what is blended learning? So blended learning is a combination of technology and traditional learning. So traditionally we learn things, but today technology being the enabler, it has come in for the good or for the benefit of how to enrich or how to enhance the traditional learning thing that is happening for years together. So it's a combination of technology and traditional learning. So, a scenario like today very clearly indicates, a scenario like today very clearly indicates that uh, we are in need of such kind of, we are in need of such kind of uh, learning. We are definitely looking forward for such kind of learning. So, this makes the learning much more exciting. This makes the learning much more exciting. So you just imagine that we are, we are in a scenario where uh, uh, there is a COVID. We are not in a position to meet in person. We have to use technology. But at the same time, we are using this as a blended learning technique to really support. Maybe you are providing some notes. You are providing some case study. You are providing some materials. And then you are using technology to transfer that particular information to them. And at the same time, you are also seeking some feedback from them. So here, the role of technology becomes a very clear enabler. It enables you to combine the traditional technology, with, uh, traditional learning or teaching with that of the, with that of the technology and ensures that your, your experiences becomes much more meaningful. <clears throat> Having said that, we are going a little further. So we get into the benefits of blended learning. So that is why if you see on the right hand side, I would have given a lot of these fruits. So what are these benefits? One, it provides you a comprehensive understanding of the course. So when, when you are when you're adapting this blended learning, and so uh, half of the things you are discussing in the class, Half of the things you are giving it as a takeaway assignment, we are giving certain links. Those links are meaningful links where they can go and read some research papers or they are uh, taking some material as a secondary source from the uh, internet and then they are coming back. So there is a comprehensive understanding of the course. It is not only that uh, they learn from whatever you discuss, but they also go further and then they learn from the so-called self-reflection so there is a lot of self-learning possibility they learn through themselves they understand they connect it with the particular course they they actually apply the concepts that you have already discussed in the course and they do a lot of self-learning so there are different e-learning methods so uh, plenty i i am definitely uh, sure that your uh, university also would have adopted a plenty of e-learning methods and uh, the learner will choose the pace and flexi flexibility. So if it is already a pre-recorded course or a value added course like that in the course era and other particular uh, uh, ways, so they know you have to complete that five modules or five 
uh, or six modules in uh, a span of say about some 10 weeks but still i am a slow learner so how do i how do i help her? so i will help myself by taking that at my own pace i may take a slightly longer period to complete but i will complete so that is the flexibility of a blended learning which may not be available in a traditional learning traditional learning there is a particular course there is a stipulated time period you have to complete that you don't have a choice but here learner chooses the pace so there is a bit of flexibility in blended learning and the different e learning methods will significantly support that particular aspect so how do i integrate so there is a is that a question okay that so when i am just trying to uh, talk about how do i integrate uh, this blended learning into our courses one you have to identify which are the topics that can uh, go well with blended learning and then create a meaningful blended learning activity uh, so say for example in science uh, you are talking about recent developments uh, you are teaching a science course and you are you are dealing with uh, something related to human body so then uh, you are giving a blended learning activity where students are supposed to go and do some kind of research and come out with what are all the regular food intake that we take will really support and enhance the immunity of the of the people to overcome this particular covid 19 so that can be a meaningful blended learning activity so when different people are getting collecting information from different sources and when that gets discussed or debated in a traditional classroom so that becomes a meaningful blended learning activity so then you run the activity so that a teacher cannot give so much of information when there are groups of students who all of them would have done some research and they come and discuss and debate it in a particular classroom in a session that makes it much more much more viable and provide more information to the entire class and then it will definitely be very very helpful so after you run the activity immediately that's what i told you in advance that it is always very very helpful to give instantaneous feedback to the students so that it will motivate the students whenever you are having an, an activity later they will involve very passionately and do that particular activity so do evaluation give a lot of importance to evaluation and feedback so evaluate the activity and once you evaluate and provide the particular feedback uh, they will improvise on that particular activity and they will come back again next time in a much much better manner so when we are talking about integrating this what are the activities that can generally be integrated so in my course i can only talk from the perspective of me in my course what i do in my course what i do is i use article and video critics so article means if there is a uh, which there is an article uh, say from harvard business review or from some leading iv school there is an article there is a strong opinion about um, whether a product should be uh, uh, using a hard selling approach so that can be a, a, a interesting topic or there is a video critic so i will show them a video or it can be a, a printed article so i will give them this particular article or a video and then i will provide them some time as a group they have to sit together they have to uh, give their critique on the article they should not tell the article is good the article is nice that i don't want to hear i want to hear from them as an mba student how are they critiquing the article so what are the key things uh, that uh, what are the key takeaways for them from that article or what are the key takeaways for them from that video so how so are they for the uh, content in the video or in the article are they against it so what are their opinions what did they learn how did they connect it with the uh, respective learnings in the course so i will ask them a few things which they will be able to critically write in a half a page one page and things like that and they will be able to uh, see how they present it to the, to the rest of the class 
so that way it can be a very good blended learning activity which is very very much meaningful for the people second one so in mba it's a very common pedagogy we use case study discussions so case studies are nothing but slices of real life so a corporate company was manufacturing something and they marketed it when they marketed it this happened so now i am asking you to consider yourself to be the manager or the marketing manager of the organization if you would have been there so what you would have done how you would have taken it so there is no right or wrong answer for a case study discussion it is trying to bring the pers perception or the respective uh, perception of the individual or the group and try to justify your particular perception in either favor of or against or what differently you would have done in that kind of a scenario you just try to put your shoes empathetically in somebody else's place and then how you would have taken a decision so that is what we try to do it in a case study presentations which are very very important pedagogy meaningful pedagogy which supports your blended learning to a large extent then comes contemporary issues so it is uh, more important for uh, for encouraging a holistic activity rather than uh, doing a particular course in isolation so what we uh, what we try and do is uh, do something on the contemporary issues especially in our particular case we do it on the uh, uh, we do it on the management side or we are doing it on the uh, business administration side so contemporary issues on management i can just give you uh, a couple of examples so probably uh, uh, because people uh, today in the covid era are worried about contamination there is a concept called contamination fear so people are worried that uh, using a currency in the society so if i'm uh, buying uh, buying products or services using currency so the currency would have been touched by many people i don't know who had a covid positive uh, or nothing like that i don't know the history of the particular currency who touched it so i am little scared to touch that particular currency and government of india also did a significant push to digital india so where they were pushing out digital currency so there are a lot of wallets money wallets there are a lot of the digital wallets there is a lot of emphasis on using a credit card or a debit card or banking transaction online transaction so many things happened so if i am asking to give an opinion of the students uh, about digital india and its impact on business in india so that can be a contemporary issue that is what is happening currently i am asking them to really think and reflect upon and bring that particular learning into the business so how should businesses in in future should look for look forward for or what should be the business look for in 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 ensuring or in paving way for digital india then comes Uh, certain things if there are uh, if there are uh, you see a strong concept say for example uh, a decision making uh, consumer decision making you have found a very good paper a research paper by uh, emeritus professors and then uh, uh, maybe in that particular field uh, leading uh, leading figures in that particular field you provide that particular uh, research paper to them and ask them to really read through and provide a, uh, provide their particular suggestions on that so the success of any activity that is done uh, used to blended learning uh, is mainly based on what kind of activity that you have chosen so not every activity needs to be done in one course i would say you can use one or two uh, activities which are very meaningful and which are very connected to the course so activity choice becomes very important and the sync of the activity with the respective course and the topic that you are teaching so when you are when you are teaching about a particular concept and asking somebody to read a research paper relevant to that particular concept will have, will make more sense rather than after one month you give a particular uh, research paper to read on a topic that was covered say about some 30 40 days earlier so that doesn't make sense you need to be a little current so the activity choice as well as the sync of the topic and uh, the particular discussion should be very much very much together then uh, then i am just looking at uh, then i'm just looking at the rubrics they are the scoring guides so if any particular activity is given i told time and again i'm been telling you uh, instantaneous and immediate feedback makes a lot of sense so create a very clear uh, scoring guide scoring guides are nothing but the rubrics you create rubrics and you tell these are all the parameters based on which you will be 
graded or you will be uh, you will be evaluated that is very important and say for example uh, they come out with an article critic so you can uh, go about after all of them after all the group have uh, all the group have uh, put in their particular presentation or their particular assignment then you can go about debriefing what was your expectation what is your perception about that video or audio or that particular article you can bring in your particular perspective and then try to say their perspective was also correct and i am also trying to put my perspective my understanding my world view of that particular video or that particular article it makes a lot of sense they will also start introspecting and then comes plagiarism so to just check whether the particular work is original or not in our particular uh, uh, engineering college here or in our department we run all the particular uh, assignments through turn it in uh, a very popular uh, plagiarism software which will check and give me the plagiarism levels and we accept to some extent some 20% plagiarism is accepted beyond which it is not accepted so that means the student has simply copied and pasted from the uh, uh, from the uh, world wide web or the google things like that which is not directly acceptable so we just want them to think originally and come out with certain uh, aspects which are much more meaningful okay uh, so having said that i am just going to come into uh, uh, plenty of interactive tools that are available for teachers so when i am uh, talking about uh, interactive tools that are available for teachers let me uh, let me talk about a few things uh, i have just tried to give a small laundry list there are uh, enormous if you can if you can browse also there are enormous ones i have just quoted a few meaningful ones uh so that uh, it might be helpful for you so the same presentation can be done using something called prezi.com so prezi.com uh, will try and help engaging with the uh, with the customer because it's an interesting powerpoint presentation so how do i call it as an interesting powerpoint presentation so you will get to know uh, in some time uh, i will i will i will show on presentation that was done using prezi so you will understand how uh, that particular powerpoint presentation is much more interesting or much more meaningful okay one second <clears throat> let us assume that you are supposed to give uh, uh, a presentation uh, but uh, your presence is not required you need not have to give it live it can be a recorded uh, uh, presentation uh, so which might be helpful for your student also the you can either directly record my presentation and give it to the student or you can do a pre recording and then send it across to the uh, students so in that particular case there is a platform called loom l w o m loom is a video recording which is made pretty easy so uh, it gives you lot of options and lot of variety of recording and uh, it uh, really makes the uh, life much more easier if you want to share some uh, pre recorded videos to students or if you are looking for some presentation from students uh, students and where you can evaluate them you can ask them to do a pre recording video through loom using loom and then send it across to you and then you can evaluate it much more easily so that way that's a very interactive tool that is there then there is something called wooclap wooclap is also an interactive tool for engagement where it is used for sharing your powerpoints uh, you can do an online uh, uh, online uh, interaction in terms of video and stuff like that there are plenty of options in wooclap also that is also very very helpful and uh, there is something called quizzes q u i double z i z this is a ready made quizzes in variety of areas say for example somebody is a science teacher there is a science quiz already available so i am a marketing teacher so i i go and search for marketing quiz so the marketing quiz relevant to my particular topic is already available so i need not have to reinvent the wheel i can simply go to quizzes okay what many don't pressure hello yeah so i can simply go to uh, i can simply go to the quizzes.com and uh, this quizzes can be directly utilized for my activities for my variety of activities then for science teachers especially for science and mathematics yeah, teachers, yeah, yeah. Teachers, yeah, there is some online simulations called fet labs p h e t fet labs so which provides lot of online simulations uh, for science and maths so that uh, uh, engages with the students 
and the students are able to understand the concept that you are trying to talk because it uses simulations and it shows the experiment or it shows how it has to be done or what does it do so that uh, there is a stronger understanding of the concepts or stronger understanding of the course or subject per se then there is something called jamboard which is a paid uh, uh, paid uh, platform from the google which is interactive and creative tool uh, uh, where uh, people when they are doing together like a jam uh, they just come together uh, each of them then can bring bring their creativity everything can be merged in one particular place or a platform and they will be able to really make use of that and uh, they can alter that and they can keep saving that it is really very helpful but it's a paid form for a reasonably professional one and there is something called breakout rooms uh, which is a very uh, common platform a uh, common platform that is popular nowadays after the uh, which is used by the platform which is very popular nowadays after the uh, lockdown or after the covid 19 called zoom zoom has some uh, opportunity where you can do breakout rooms and this breakout rooms uh, uh, can be as big as 50 groups you can create 50 different uh, separate sessions uh, both either manually or automatically and as an instructor you can get into each group and then see what is happening so this will be very very helpful if you are having large larger audience and you want them to uh, make virtual groups and then they need to interact among amongst themselves and they have to come back to you and give a kind of a verdict and things like that this kind of a breakout room is very helpful it is it is really a, a handy tool that one can really look upon and make use of then i am talking about edu puzzle so what is this edu puzzle edu puzzle uh, can be a, a particular tool where you can create a video for yourself you can use the video very freely you can reuse a video that means if there is a video that is already available in uh, uh, youtube so you can just uh, uh, reuse that particular video uh, and uh, just provide that this particular thing was taken from so and so source and then go ahead using this particular uh, the uh, partic particular uh, platform called edu puzzle and it can be your own video or a content and it can be used by somebody else which you want to share to the class so there are so many uh, these are some key uh, tools that i am slightly aware of i i don't know many there are plenty of many other tools also if you can really uh, search for there are plenty but these are some meaningful ones which i felt uh, will help uh, many teachers who can so one cannot use so many tools so the, though there are plenty of tools one cannot use everything but there are such certain things which are very handy which are very helpful you can try one at a time to just uh, test success uh, that is about interactive tools okay then uh, uh, coming to uh, the concept of how do we engage more and more often so that is a very that's a very valid point here so how does one engage more and more often so when we are talking about engaging more and more often uh, uh, you can uh, you can make the class much more interesting by connecting with current affairs uh, so today's uh, student community at least in india i'm not too sure about your place but in india uh, students do not spend enough time in understanding what is happening uh, in day to day life in the news or what is the current affairs what is happening say if is a business a student you should be knowing uh, what is happening in the business world who took over a particular company why is the stock market uh, uh, dwindling because of some reasons why is the stock market up if budget has been presented by the prime minister what happens to the budget what will be the sentiment of the investors or uh, if uh, facebook is having a different kind of a policy in india how is it going to affect the digital marketing so they should be knowing some current affairs is my thought so contemporary issues in the respective fields and domains needs to be uh, discussed more often in the classes apart from the regular course content we should not be always discussing only the course content which makes it more monotonous we also need to engage on certain topics or on certain areas which are which are significantly current affairs which will really enlighten their particular knowledge which will enrich their particular knowledge and they will be able to really open up and share lot of things that they are aware of that so that way it should be a two way process it should be a teaching learning kind of a, a mode 
where it should not only uh, focus on the one way communication so that one way communication uh, will 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 kind kind of create a border so one needs to look at slightly in a different way okay then uh, moocs can be used as a value added module say let us assume that you are running a course so on marketing and you wanted to uh, wanted to introduce uh, something related to analytics uh, whereas you don't have enough time uh, during your regular uh, lecture hours or your teaching hours to uh, teach them enough of analytics so you use that particular moocs course on marketing analytics uh, which i have also done one course on marketing analytics by virginia tech university so that's a good course so you can ask your students also also to do the particular course which will be more meaningful so so you are also trying to engage them uh, using the uh, technology and uh, these moocs are becoming very popular nowadays across the globe so it is also available for sometimes it is if the institute has got a tie up you get a lot of moocs courses free Uh, and uh, you can make use of the particular MOOC courses for providing it to your students. Then uh, Desmos dot com uh, is another particular tool where uh, you can engage people who are teaching mathematics and people who are teaching geometry can engage with uh, with uh, this particular platform and make use of uh, this particular engagement. And uh, you can uh, you can as a regular measure. in order to ensure that there is a two way interaction that is always there you can always look for student presentations so you give them uh, selective topics it can be uh, it can be for an individual if you are having a smaller uh, uh, class audience and it can be a group activity when it is a larger class audience and then uh, you can ask the students to do some presentations and uh, you can give some feedback with regard to lot of things one the way in which the uh, presentation was done the second the content uh, the third the third was how the particular uh, presentation should have happened in case if you feel that the presentation was not up to the mark so you can you can definitely give in a lot of feedbacks and you can add in a lot of meaningful content to ensure that you are giving a power packed uh, presentation one so the student presentations uh, will have multiple impacts one the student has the habit of searching for information aligning the information creating a powerpoint presentation and presenting it in front of an audience that is one one benefit second benefit is whenever he presents and whenever he faces some hurdle his mind will start thinking and he will start defending his particular viewpoint so when he starts defending his particular viewpoint what happens slowly his confidence level will improve so when will confidence level improve confidence level will improve only when you put in enough of hard effort to ensure that your presentation doesn't go as a failure so that means there is a lot of hard work that hard work will pay so student presentations are much more important the fourth one is case study discussions which have which we have already uh, discussed in elaborate and the case study discussions uh you also have to be uh, clear in a couple of things one in identifying a case that is very relevant to the course second identifying a case that is very relevant to the topic that you are discussing you need to be a little more current third one you have to ensure that all the particular participants come in front of the dais and they need to they need to present and they need to debate and definitely there should be questions from the from across the class to ensure that they have taken uh, this particular activity much more meaningfully so that way i think uh, uh, this case studies so case studies can be uh, as small as some two page or three page case and it can run up to 10 pages or 20 pages it depends but those particular cases when you are uh, when you are uh, doing a 20 page case you need to be very clearly Uh, prepared for a debriefing so initially they will brief and then you have to go about doing a debriefing session so that debriefing session you should very clearly uh, set your expectations telling that this is these are the things that was done and this is how it was expected to be done and uh, uh, how are you going to improve that so certainly you can give them some feedback which uh, they will take it and also you should uh, uh, engage your students in such a particular way that uh, 
they take all they give they take all their particular feedback as a positive criticism and then they keep improving in their life so case study discussions is like that and frequency of connect matters it is not about once in a while connecting with the students so that may not help the frequency of connect is matter so you have to frequently connect with them discuss with them engage with them and uh, uh, show a lot of empathy towards them so that it becomes much more meaningful much more meaningful and uh, okay a few examples i will try i will try playing a prezi we'll just see is it visible to all of you hello visible sir visible sir uh, yeah this is a prezi this is a prezi presentation uh, uh, using a prezi as a tool or uh, as a platform for your powerpoint presentation prezi looks like this i will just go go about presenting so it just goes like this for uh, human resource planning four aspects then it will go like this and it will go like this sir kindly share those three links uh, in the chat box yeah I I do. Uh, yeah yeah I will, uh, I will share the whole presentation no problem okay professor thank you thank you sir that's much. not an issue it is it has just been created for you people only yeah thank you thank you i don't have a problem i can share it with will that will that be okay hello yes professor yeah. so that's fine right. so uh, uh, so this is how uh, prezi will look like so prezi will be will be more engaging and it will uh, it will make uh, people much more uh, happy when they are using this kind of a powerpoint presentation so i thought i will just give you an iota or insight about this particular prezi so this was one of the prezi presentations i have used for one of my uh, sales classes so i did not want to use that today okay so this is one the second one right ninga type panirunga seriya type panirunga the second one is sir type panni vechittu podum is it is it audible is it audible yes audible professor yeah yeah for several reasons the first is that no matter what type of access you have to learn you can always record for an unlimited amount of time and loom offers its pro features entirely free for teachers and students as long as you can verify that you're affiliated with a school i also just really like the call out features for the desktop version of loom and the other thing i like about it is the ease with which you can share videos after they've been created my name is sam carry and this is my youtube channel for the new at tech boss So I'm going to show you the Chrome extension version of Loom, as well as the desktop version that's available for Mac computers. And at the end of this video, I'm also going to show you how you can upload your videos into a couple of different programs to add interactivity features to them and make them significantly more dynamic and useful for your teaching. If you appreciate the tips that I share in this video, you can show your support by hitting the like button and sharing it with other teachers that you know. And also subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly updates. All right, let's jump in and take a look now at why I think you should be using Loom to create your video tutorials for students. So to get to Loom, I'm just going to search for Loom, and then I'll click on the first link that pops up. Before we get in, I just want to show you a little bit about the pricing structure here. So if you click on pricing. You'll notice that the pro version is free for all educators and students to use. It's pretty straightforward to get that pro access. You just need to click on the free for educators link. That will send you through the process of answering some questions just to verify that you are in fact affiliated with a school. 
and you will need to sign up for the pro account with your school email address. If you want additional information, you can also go to this Lean for Education page, and there's information on this page, for example, about how they comply with different privacy rules. So if you need that information, it's there for you to access. So first, I'm actually just going to show you what the entirely free version looks like. So I'm going to go up here to Get Loom for Free, and then we're going to start by just looking at the Chrome extension version of Loom. So if you click Install Extension, it's going to send you over to the Chrome Web Store, and there you can click Add Extension in order to add that extension to your browser. And then once it's installed, you'll just want to make sure that it is actually pinned to your browser, and then you'll see the extension show up. So let's say that I want to create a video tutorial for my students, and I want to be showing them something about this National Geographic web page. I'll start just by clicking on the extension, and then I'll click one click access in order to give Loom access to my microphone and camera. Click allow, and then you're going to see the Loom interface pull up on your screen. So you'll notice that you can see my image down in the bottom left-hand side Hello. of the screen as I'm recording. And if you want yeah. to turn that off, you can just go up to record screen only in order to do so. And then a quick way to oh, the video is not visible is just to look at this wavelength here. If it's moving, then it's yeah, I, I will just have the yeah, option yeah, to okay. then I will go ahead with the last one before just one tab. Personally, I almost always record my entire yeah, desktop okay. just because I'm usually yeah. driving around to multiple yeah. tabs and I want to make yeah, sure that everything gets yeah, recorded. Yeah. So once you're ready to record, you just press start recording. Okay. You'll be asked if you want to share your screen, slash. Yeah. So let me quickly go ahead uh, with uh, my further uh, presentations. Uh, so these uh, these are some of the uh, examples of the links that uh, you will I will get through the presentation. Uh, so I'll get into my closing remarks. So online learning is inevitable that all of us know. And experiential learning and blended learning works. It is the need of the hour, so nobody can deny that uh, it will not uh, it will not work. Uh, it will definitely work, and I have shown few examples where it works. It has the advantage of the place from wherever you want to have it, wherever you want to conduct it. It also got the advantage of pace, and it also has the advantage of time. So make use of uh, the enormous interactive tools that I have shared with all of you. And I think it's time. Let's get started. There is no point in uh, thinking about it. Uh, so this is one tentative action plan, assuming a one hour session. I have just given my perception. It need not be uh, a blanket one for everybody. You can choose your own this one. So if it is a one hour online session, I would suggest a lecture or a conceptual discussion with engaging PPT should be there for some 25 to 35 minutes. And then videos, uh, which are very relevant to the respective courses, can run for 5 to 10 minutes interruption in between. And then uh, you can plan a class activity for every class. It can be for an individual, if they are all in different places, or if they are virtually connected, then there is no problem. You can ensure that the class activity can go on uh, for 10 to 15 minutes, it's all, it's all some smaller activities. And uh, post class assignment or a quiz. So if you have uh, done, uh, if you have done a discussion for about one hour and you have covered certain contents, and you want to see uh, how students have understood those particular contents, then I think uh, you can definitely uh, do a post class assignment, ask them to do a post class assignment or a quiz. It can be a short one for five minutes. So this will roughly this will roughly engage you for about an hour. So this is a tentative action plan from uh, my end, which I am suggesting that uh, will be very helpful or useful to you when you are when you are going when you are going to make use of this in your uh, in your respective courses. So with this, I come to an end of my session and. Uh, uh, I'm just looking forward for some questions and as suggested, I think I can show my face now so that it doesn't take much of my, uh, this one. I don't know, am I visible? Yes. Yes.
Okay. Yeah, I'm open for questions. Anybody has got something to ask, then I'm free to answer here. If there is nothing, if there is no questions, then I deem either uh, my presentation is completely understood or my presentation is completely like a bouncer, it, uh, it went above your head. So are you trying to prove? Are you trying to prove again? Hello. Yeah, yeah, please. Hello. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, good morning, sir. This is Anand Kumar from Zambia. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please, Mr. Anand. So uh, for my uh, uh, queries, is, uh, you said uh, regarding the uh, physical training as well as the online training teachings. Sir. So on your own perceptions, which is the best method, sir? So yeah, in India. yeah I am I am basically a, a teacher who supports a lot of traditional teaching. Uh, see, I have I have I have started with chalk and talk, then I have moved to overhead projections, then I have moved to PPT. Now I am back to chalk and talk in a slightly different way, a whiteboard and a marker. So I feel the maximum engagement for any particular faculty. Uh, is like a, teaching is like a performing art. You go to the class and start enacting, and you just try to uh, share the particular knowledge, gather a lot of information from students. It is a two-way communication. It needs to be thoroughly debated and discussed. So for me, as a particular uh, person, as an individual faculty, uh, I feel and I support the traditional method of teaching to a large extent when compared to online teaching. Though I am not against online teaching. We, we were able to connect people from DMI and I were able to connect only because of online teaching. I'm not against it, but I feel if I would have had a session in person with all of you, it would have been even much more better. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for your answer. And another question is, uh, so yeah. if you're concerned of uh, uh, top countries which is developed in this world, so many of the, uh, maybe 10 or 15 years back itself, uh, many of the countries, developed the countries who are applied for online uh, teaching methodology. What do you yeah. feel, sir? So they are make the successful for the 10 years back itself, sir. Yeah, say for example, if you take Coursera, which is not from uh, from our own country, they have lot of, they have made a lot of money now during this pandemic because they were able to sell their particular uh, business model very well. So you know definitely there is a disparity between uh, developed countries, developing countries and underdeveloped countries. So developed countries, they are, sorry, developed countries are way ahead of uh, the either the developing or underdeveloped nations and they are technologically much more superior. So they, they have visionized that uh, these kind of things are going to happen in the future and they were able to really uh, make use of it and they have monetized that also. So the online online uh, uh, learning or online teaching or online coaching has become a big business today. They have made a lot of money. Yes, absolutely yes. Those people are visionaries. They, they thought that future is going to be online and they have caught up with that much more earlier. Yes, I agree with you, Professor. Yeah, I'm open to a few more. If there is any questions. Clement has a question. No. Mm. Sorry? Because some of us were on and off because of network. Oh, we will okay. need the, 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 the presentations. Oh, yeah, presentation I will share, no worries. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Certainly I will share the presentation, no worries.
Yep. I'm open for last one or two questions. Otherwise, we can wind up. I don't want to keep you waiting because there is no point both of us waiting without any discussion. Dear participants, if you have the queries, please be free and ask in the floor. This is a session we are organized as the first one, how to build the competency of teacher. So whatever the queries you have related to the online uh, online trainer, what are the competency skills must and feel free to ask. And tomorrow onwards, we're going to be uh, take the training of how we're going to use the each tools for the enhance your online teaching. Fine, I think, uh, uh, what is the time there uh, currently? Uh, here time is 10.30. 10.30, I think they want some tea break or they're feeling a little hungry. Uh, so probably I think there's no questions, much of questions. Uh, so if oh. they really, if they really liked uh, this particular presentation, let them tell, let them go and tell the whole world. If there is any complaints, let them tell me alone. That's my uh, take, so that I can definitely improvise if there is a uh, there is something that I need to improve. I'll be more happy, and I look forward for a very formal feedback from your end, uh, professors, so that it yes, will help yes. me out uh, in in my future. Yes, uh, professor, uh, is your presentation is very, uh, really very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think our faculty members will learn from you something, uh, how to build the competency. Um, dear participants, uh, now I can pose the uh, assignment question for the first session. Uh, the question is, uh, the comparative of traditional and online teaching, and what are the competency skills needed as a self the teacher should be take uh, become an online teacher. So this is the question for the first session. So kindly prepare the 10 slides of PowerPoint presentation as per your uh, analysis, uh, PPT or document, you can submit in the feedback form. So up to the feedback form, today's 4.30 is available in online. So you can submit it. Now, uh, my organizing team will post the feedback form and question on the floor. Yeah, and uh, let me tell you, uh, can you just tell me to whose mail ID I should share the presentation, please? Uh, you can share it to me, sir. Uh, yeah. I can, uh, can uh, share as the one. Yes. Sir, can you please repeat? Please repeat. I have four things. I have. Uh, on the assignments, please repeat. Yes. Uh, the comparative study of traditional to online, and what are the competency skills needed to, as a self trainer, to take as a training, become an online teacher? So, Rajkumar, Rajkumar, ENGG2020 at gmail.com. Yes, this is my mail, lady, sir. I will. I shall definitely send it across. So with your kind permission, can I take a leave? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, you yeah, a really you. wonderful thank presentation, you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank sir. you all uh, for your uh, patience yes, here. Thanks. Oh, screen share. Uh, dear participants, in the uh, feedback form, in the last part, they have the file name is add file. So you can prepare as a PowerPoint presentation or uh, document related to this question. 
you can upload it before 4 30.